when did it occur to you you know this is one dish that i can also link concretely to yes. management in the last 4 5 years i was thinking that what is that one complete thing which looks like an organization and that's when i started relating okay it's the one leader which is biryani what is cooking to you how did your love uh, for cooking begin so for me actually it came uh, with a necessity of supporting the family honestly it never came in as a career by choice i was being pushed into engineering because born, being born and brought up in kharagpur you have only one option either IIT. go to iit <laughs> kharagpur or at the last chance is go to the railways so, which is your favorite biryani so for me because i trained myself in hyderabad i still love, love the hyderabadi the biryani hello everyone just kiran kapoor here i am here today with someone who has added so much namak to our lives with his <laughs> yummy dishes foods recipes and his namak shamak style and i think the entire world knows we used to glue to the television watching him and sanjeev kapoor and you know whipping up dish after dish and teaching us how simple entertaining and fun uh, creating something out of raw ingredients can be so harpal singh ji is here in chandigarh for the launch of his book and it's a very interesting book because it's the first of its kind in the world the biryani leader spice up your management style so how biryani from being a comfort food is also the king of foods and can really be a great guru a teacher and teach you the best lessons in management something which harpal ji has been collecting over a period of 10 years scribbling away and now i'm going to over to him tell us about your book first harpal ji so uh, all listeners thank you so much uh, for having me up here and uh, uh, i'm very happy to say that today is a date again i get to present uh, my book the biryani leader Uh, now biryani leader is a thought process which uh, has been there in my mind for last 10 years and i've always been uh, intrigued by the subject that you know what is that uh, that you see inside a cooking vessel okay can you relate it with something else something differently because as a chef we were all taught that cooking is all about art and science and we only restricted the thought there and uh, i've been in the practice of thinking differently and you know uh, doing things differently so i thought that okay no there is something beyond this and whenever i would cook and i would see ingredients behaving so differently uh, upon addition of one addition of another one and uh, those things helped me relating them with management principles and day to day principles of life at the same time i would see a cooking vessel as a complete organization where people were ingredients and how they behaved differently inside the cooking vessel and how there was an external environment which was being handled by somebody who could be the leader and and first let me also share this with you that why did the name biryani leader come i think there is only one leader in an organization and there is only one king of foods as a wholesome food which is biryani and that's the largest selling single dish in the country uh, and i believe uh, that uh, the stats clearly define that it is one of its own uh, recipe one of its kind uh, dish in itself right so in itself it is a great comfort food in addition if you add on things like a raita or a salan or a mirchi or a papad to it it is more fun to it now let's give you a classic example here okay so if you look at the biryani in itself in itself it is a great great subject when you relate it with management because there are about 100 things going inside the biryani to make one dish yet you understand one flavor which is the flavor of biryani biryani is also apart from being a teacher it has a very rich history yes so is it as indian as it can be or oh, it is, is, it, is mean, it an import uh, and so, we've added our flavors to it so i actually i'll tell you what you know there are various stories and theories to mm. uh, the biryani many people say that biryani existed in the country before the mughal invasions and kingdoms who settled in india then there were some theories that say that okay during the wars the mughals uh, you know for their soldiers created a one pot dish yes. there's also a theory Queen which Taz, yes yeah. so there's also a theory which says that uh, there's this uh, 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 lady from lucknow the nawabs mm. and you uh, know they when they were founding their uh, their forts etc uh, the lady found that the queen found that okay the 
waiters are not getting enough protein i mean the workers are not getting enough protein so she had to create a wholesome dish and she created the biryani so in itself the biryani whether you take it food. as a non veg thing or a veg thing it's a complete complete dish like i was mentioning you know in itself it is a complete dish when you have accompaniments it adds further value, value to it too. so what are those accompaniments when i think from my angle from the management side of it i think okay you have an organization in the form mm -hmm. of the biryani the accompaniments are like consultants okay, okay. <laughs> so they add value to it with each thing you would take a little salam you would taste it you taste it differently you add a little raita it tastes a little differently okay so these are little consultants who are enhancing your flavor enhancing the value of the company it is very interesting you know because uh, very few people have connected food uh, with management correct uh, when did this occur to you of course you've been scribbling for 10 years yes. now but when did it occur to you you know this is one dish that i can also link concretely to yes. management this that so, must have been a eureka moment absolutely. you must have gathered your notes absolutely i i think what has happened is i first i was thinking that what i see inside the cooking vessel yeah is a complete theory of management that i see inside okay for example yes, sir, you were saying macro yes, and micro yes. levels also so when you look at the mac micro level inside the cooking vessel mm -hmm. so you've kept a cooking vessel right on the burner flame Hanji. okay and you have to understand how much heat it needs to be provided which mm -hmm. means you need to give the right kind of atmosphere to your workers it's a classic saying that on the agla yes and on the agla that much fire in the belly <laughs> exactly <laughs> Keep exactly. them going. <laughs> over, over, you you over uh, heat the whole thing. There's an employee then burnout. There's, yes, there's a burnout, right? Yeah, and true. that's what we described clearly. Yeah. And then when you add things at a very high heat thing, for example, jeera or your you know spices, yes. they all going to burn out. Ah, or milchi pyaaz jal jande. So <laughs> you you are not going to see the right yeah. flavor there. So what you will do is, as a micro thing or as a leader, you would take out the vessel outside. Okay, you would keep it aside. Let the whole thing cool up. then add mm -hmm. or the other classic example is when you see the jalebi wala making jalebi yes. you will see his jalebi kadai yes. because he is constantly making jalebi and beautifully it's a calligraphy card yes <laughs> and after a point of sign to control the temperature he will add another ghee yes. now what is that classic thing that it's the hr's job yes. to understand this that hello let me cool down this whole subject matter add some external factors who will come and change the theory of thinking of people there so that's what you are doing so these little classic things kept happening but when did the biryani thing happen to me as you asked me is that in the last 4 5 years i was thinking that what is that one complete thing which looks like an organization and that's when i started relating okay it's the one leader which is biryani which is biryani but you know when we cook food we also say it's in the hand yes. they see hisab kitab nahi lande yes. barkat nahi rehndi they say ke tusi don't measure just Correct. put and try Correct. and eat Correct. but management principles can be very structured very yes. scientific yes. how do you relate biryani to that because you keep tasting the dish also ha na yes. and uh, the ingredients are never that measured Correct. or are they like how so, what uh, what about those uh, logistics actually involved? i tell you what you know we always believe that uh, Uh, they are not measured but if you ask our moms mothers you know they have their measurement very clear hmm. they will say that okay teen logo ne teen ten log ka vaste banona a ek kauli pa de one ha. of those vessels okay her measurements were never in grams she hmm. had her own measurements ha. that were available in the kitchen yeah like my mother has Correct. ke suit silne assi haath naal mindde ha but exactly ha. so they had their own measurements hmm. way of doing things okay they never had uh, the calculation that itta gram dalna hai ya inna gram pona hai ye sab nahi hai kasi but they had their own measurements and they stuck to that, that okay that accurate andaza uh, exactly <laughs> and i found this very cleverly and very well connected in the japanese 5s principles okay. and they are exactly the same um, japanese 5s manufacturing principle is cleverly and clearly followed by toyota Honda, What are the 5S? So the 5S is set, sort, sign, sustain, and standardize. Okay. Standardize and sustain. Yes. Okay. So it is the complete kitchen formula. So you set into cooking. So now you define everything. You arrange everything. You sort out what is needed. Don't bring unnecessary things. Okay. Then you shine by constantly doing a thing. Okay. Then you standardize it by going back and forth, saying that okay. 
to shine further i need to standard standardize then you need to sustain okay so sustenance comes with correctively doing things daily in the same manner and that is so very perfect for a chef if you see if you want to cook biryani every day you will probably have to cook it i mean if you have yes. to master you have to cook every day yes ek din mein nahi banega standardize it right yes. and then to sustain your standardization works very well True. so these principles actually act so very well and this these are the things that i kept looking for and i i could connect them very well uh, in my book you know i was reading a lot about you and i found it so interesting that you are a sadar ji yeah. born in west bengal yeah. in that entire east culture yeah. and you know odia telugu apart yes. from hindi english yes. punjabi yes. is a bengali also yes. you traveled you know india like the back of your hand yes and the love for biryani also came when you uh, understood biryani with uh, ustad pasha when yes. you learned hyderabadi absolutely. biryani from absolutely. him absolutely so uh, this journey of yours throughout india yes. how has that honed you as a chef because you know a lot of sardars are still associated with a lot of fun and you know ke they'll crack a joke or they'll absolutely. they're not taken seriously yeah. what were the challenges that you faced and probably applied in this book also because so, that is also a challenge absolutely to uh, be to be taken seriously absolutely so uh, you know to be taken seriously was they tell you na ke namak shamak hi bolo pangda palo and that <laughs> hey, can be irritating also yes. sometimes no but uh, it is there and i take it very sportingly okay. but for people to believe that you are serious about what's happening in your life and what you've been scribbling is why don't you go and print the book so that's what i did you know because when i was bringing this subject across to various publishers most of them did not understand honestly mm-hmm. that what am i talking about okay now how can it be possible how do you see management inside a vessel i said this is the way you see no no i don't know whether people will accept it or not fine i mean that's my thing to understand and i need to learn more to communicate so that the person in front understand then finally i met the story mirror people the publisher and he understood well and now after publishing with the book going best seller within 24 hours and that was his first book that could crack that you know subject he came back to me and he said that harpal first i never believed you so much i was happy that i have a unique author mm. who is doing things differently but i was skeptical about the book mm. uh, how it would uh, look like how was the outcome however having said this i said that okay for me it is better to have so See. many authors mm. one more author then i over a period of time from a chef to an entrepreneur believed that you know writing was one part of the book can i sell the book that is the most important part so we could sell pre sell the book to such an extent that he was so happy so in the first 24 hours with the book going on print i could sell about 2000 so copies it, so to uh, it doesn't have biryani recipes it has recipe yes. to management yes. skills that is very very good that, that <laughs> so don't what... pick it up thinking there will be some recipe to cook the ultimate biryani <laughs> absolutely so all people need to understand the subject is about cooking not about recipes recipe books now would be coming uh soon uh, special so, books like you right? said that you know some elements were missing yes. so what series next i is so uh, no now uh, cook everyday cooking with management principles okay. is what i'm thinking so why i'm saying this is here it is an elaborate thought process mm-hmm. of an organization about emotions mm-hmm. about uh, my journey about humor about happiness uh, about cooking inside uh, the vessel okay about an organization how do you see that okay how an individual ingredient plays the role uh, and relate that with uh, an organization and the next series i am looking at is saying that okay you know okay about the classic things that how does oil burn what yes. do you relate that yes. okay what do you do there mm-hmm. and those things are those simple one minute manager if you have heard about mm-hmm. that book i am trying to do something similar to all that. right you know uh, cooking is also considered as therapy yes you brought it to the management yes. status but what is cooking to you how did your love uh, for cooking begin so for me actually it came uh, with a necessity of supporting the family honestly it never came in as a career by choice yeah because uh, early, you were yes. being pushed into engineering yes i was being pushed into engineering because born, being born and brought up in kharagpur you have only one option i go to iit <laughs> kharagpur or at the last chances go to the railways that's okay. it so uh, your father was in yes, railways uh, yes so uh, the iit kharagpur first attempt did not happen 
so started preparing the second attempt my elder brother who was also going through this process he said that if we both go through this process uh, the support to the family would be very late and we might have to uh, get into issues so why don't you uh, empower yourself with some skill set you know and we had a neighbor who had done ihm he had a job immediately after passing he came suited booted every time he yeah, would come back they home they cut a smart yes, figure yes <laughs> and uh, so he said that this is the right course for you he's got a job he's employed and there's no worry now for his father why don't you go and join this and i told my brother see we have not stepped inside a restaurant a hotel until 18 years of age and you want me to do the subject course which i don't know abc of it he says yeah waiter ban jayega to but tension mat le waiter to ban hi jayega na i said yes yes this is a good thought waiter ban jayega so we got into with this thought of getting into a hotel as a waiter but somehow i would say the third and the fourth month of the first year in ihm uh, i could sense that there is something called chef which i have started liking and i could see the god sent signal there that okay this is something which i should pursue and that's where the whole uh, marriage happened between me and the external energies okay and then i never looked back okay whatever was required to become a good chef is what i started empowering myself with how many biryanis did you have to gut before getting the right biryani so i will give you a very classic example i i keep traveling a lot so i keep you know eating biryanis and like you mentioned about habib pasha so uh, that was one classic learning about biryani and each each thing that he would do i can relate that with a classic management principle okay mm. like he would let me you know hammer uh, the uh, mutton after being scrubbed with all the spices and then i would bang the mutton yeah. inside the cooking vessel now that was a classic way of tearing and softening the tissue of the meat okay mm -hmm. now if you really look at that's a hard on process so if you want to learn things hard you need to deep dive okay you cannot just stand outside no, and say has to be right so that is the classic depth. thing okay yes. you need to go go through the grind and that's what the mutton goes through okay mm -hmm. it goes through the grind that's how a kachi ghost ki biryani is made the raw meat gets cooked with uh -huh. almost uh, you know half cooked rice mm -hmm. which is like a classic learning for anybody so i went through lot of tasting of various biryanis the south indian biryani is different to Very the different. west bengal one yes. uh, to the hyderabadi one to yes. the avdi one to Punjabi. the bombay one to the punjabi one okay each one is different but i'll give you another classic example okay the south indian biryani is with short grain rice and it's sticky yes. okay it is never you know separate grain yes. which is why if you see within their nature they are very close knit families very close knit people even in very, the silly, yes. yes so that's the classic example okay but here in north if you see the rice is full blown flamboyant okay each grain color. yes color mm -hmm. each grain is full fluffy with that ego structure in it but i see that mote ego... mote piece pa yes. de chicken de <laughs> but i see that ego structure and fluffiness in its own way as a journey to growth mm -hmm. okay i do not see that uh, as a negative ego i see that an ego by saying people that okay there is growth in everything when you spend things when you show things to people there is growth that you see there also so these are classic examples no, that I, yes <laughs> and i i could classically see this uh, in both the biryanis and i related and narrated that in my book also which is your favorite biryani so for me because i trained myself in hyderabad i still love, love the hyderabadi the biryani i think that's world over yes. is the best is. yes and for students who are coming up you know you are also teaching a lot in your uh, in while you are uh, preparing in hotels yes. while you are uh, communicating through television yes you are also teaching a very vast number of people Correct. including the upcoming chefs so chefs in your uh, organization in in the hotel right. so today what would you tell students or children who want to look for a career in being a chef like what should they step in uh, th with what idea so, okay the world is changing at yes. such a fast rate yes. technology is overtaking everything and this is a creative field yes so how should they approach it or how should they come so you know one thing that i'm learning is that this being a creative field the ai will empower you further your creativity will always be at number 1 so okay so how is ai going to empower cooking so empower by standardizing your recipes your feeds etc okay 
that's how AI is going to help you there. Having said this, I would say to all the uh, people who are aspiring chefs, okay, uh, there is no shortcut to life. You know, everybody thinks that, uh, you know, let's become celebrity chef or a well-known chef overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. You, if it happens overnight for you, you are that lucky guy with the golden spoon right there. Remember, if you've got that, I would still give you a piece of advice by saying that, okay, luck by chance, you have grown there. Now, empower yourself by strengthening your roots. However, to all people, I would say that, you know, you need to work hard, have patience, stay focused, bring in that perseverance power in you so that you kind of learn the right things to grow further. And this is the time for chefs. As we pass COVID, I have seen... Yes, post-pandemic, yes, I was coming Post-pandemic, I have seen how the hospitality industry has bounced back to such an extent that uh, people are looking for chefs and hospitality professionals. Right time to do your IHMs. Uh, this is not going to die. The world also says that hospitality professionals and professionals, uh, they will be there for the next few decades. Okay. And this is your time. So don't carry on with the shortcuts. You've got great learning tools, apply them to your life and enhance your career by using them correctly. So are you also post pandemic looking at this entire change of ingredients, this alternate, uh, you know, because there is a rise in cancer, there is a rise in other diseases, which yes. they are linking to the food table, yes. to processed foods, to various kinds of adulterations. So how as a chef, as a food scientist, uh, do you view the whole thing and uh, are you also now uh, looking closely at your ingredients, sourcing the best organic? Well, I would, I would there say... There must have been some shift in the yes, thoughts. Yes, I would, I would say that yes, first thing that I, I put in my recipes is, you know, I do not want to blend wrong things in my kitchen. Okay, I classically say this uh, and I, I bought this sattvic element in my cooking, in my restaurants after visiting Haridwar or Banaras or, you know, such places, after visiting there, I bought the sattvic element. I realized that whenever you eat Indian food, you burp, you feel bloated, yes. you feel sleepy. So that sattvic element was very, very clear. I learned that the more garlic goes in, the more you'll burp, okay, the more heavy you'll feel. Remove that garlic and that's what the sattvic elements do, okay. Cut off the crap from there so that it makes you feel healthy. Number one. Number two is that I clearly, whenever I do my mocktails or blends or things like that, I clearly understand that I cannot blend milk with fruits in any form. Yes, no, I cannot yeah, that do is that. a new yeah. thing. That's but new. you go out and you see that milk is being blended with so many fruits and I dearly don't encourage that. I, I seriously don't encourage that. But because these are slow poisons, okay? And these elements need to be controlled in some some way or the other also at the my own level now we've been talking about year of millets okay we've also captured those elements of you know classic dishes of millets inside my restaurant where health is a key factor uh, when you talk about sustainability i have bought in some ingredients which were just simply used in some parts of the country like the lal sag in west bengal mm -hmm. okay we know it as lal sag. The world knows it as amaranth food. Yes. Yeah. So uh, people don't even uh, you know look at it. But I have created. No, amaranth such a... is huge hit with dietitians. Yes, yes absolutely. Quinoa, but amaranth. When you when, when you say amaranth, huh. the moment you say lal sag, ah, even millets, finish. jowar, ragi, bajra have always you been finish. there. Yeah, it's been there. Mm -hmm. But the moment you say lal sag, it is finished. The moment you say amaranth itself. So we bought that amaranth kebab, okay, with puffed amaranth tikki, rajgira. Okay, Rajgira has been there, yes. right? So we bought in those elements, those dishes in my cooking, where we say that, okay, there is indulgence, there is health, and you need to choose what so is right these for were, you. So this can be applied to your book, that there is hidden talent in your organization. Yes. You keep excavating yes, absolutely, it. absolutely. And what were the lessons learned from Sanjeev Kapoor? Because you've had the longest association yes. with him. You've yes. written books with him. You see, the best thing. And best food, thing. food channel. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I, I think uh, you see somewhere or the other... Uh, some journeys help you learn a lot and I would say that that journey with him helped me uh, learn a lot. I was very good at my skill set, okay, while he was very good as a visionary leader, okay. He could envisage things before anybody could do 
in the country and i i really loved that thought process and uh, i i knew that okay i need to empower uh, myself with that vision i was good at my skill set i need to enhance that more and then he taught me how to become an entrepreneur i became an entrepreneur mm-hmm. and i am sustaining myself uh, with the best of my capabilities last yes i am not going to take much time uh, so you because you were in west bengal how did you keep the punjabi spirit alive you know you're hardcore punjabi and yes. i think uh, that's very important because you maintained that persona Absolutely. that image Absolutely. how uh, who was instrumental in it so how? actually the family my father and my family and the set of people uh, in our neighborhood helped me uh, retain uh, my avatar as a sikh completely there and the story goes that in around in 1930s when bnr railways was being developed so near taran taran vadisariali was a set of people where my dada ji and his entire family was there and they were tarkhans carpenters okay they were all picked up by the britishers so nice. <laughs> uh, they were all picked up by the britishers and taken to west bengal hmm. to build those wooden railway coaches okay that is how the journey began mm-hmm. and those set of people sustained there for quite a long time okay stayed there as a close knit family and i would also say that uh, the road many few people know that the road grand trunk road that is there was completely taken by the sardar sikh drivers who settled in west bengal up to chittagong and during that period the road was not very far from kadakpur mm-hmm. Yes. where we had settled down so a lot of the truckers and the truck drivers they also settled there grew their business so we had a very large net family and we all uh, sustained and uh, relived and lived the life of six there and continue to live so till date beautiful thank you so kid it you. was lovely talking to you i thank wish you. we could talk more thank and you. all the best for your book i look thank forward you. to the series sure. now thank you that's it from just yeah. kiran and harpal singh so kid thank you